What was your biggest treat your self regret? I just passed my exams in university, so decided to treat myself to some Ben Jerry's. I woke up covered in hives, vomiting, and burning up. Apparently I had an unknown allergy. It was the worst week of my life. Was it tree nuts? Same sh different dessert happened to me. I bought a pair of quad roller skates on a whim. Meaning that I did no research turns out there is quite a bit of intricacy with skates. I had purchased a pair meant for speed, meant for indoor rinks. My intended use was for outdoor skating. This resulted in falling on my A a million times outside and having zero control on my newly paved road. After buying softer wheels meant for outdoors, wow it's a huge difference. I should have done some research and saved myself a good chunk of money. I regret the spur of the moment purchase, but I am glad that I got the skates and new wheels. Thought I've never been on a cruise. I want to go on a cruise now. So booked a two week Caribbean cruise, in a suite, with the wife, who, on arrival, decided she didn't like me anymore and spent two weeks avoiding me. So I spent two weeks on my own on this bloody ship. We're divorced now. This is why I have never gone on a cruise. I really like my wife. Our issue on the cruise was that between food and drink you want to just veg for a day but the rooms are terrible for it. Maybe that's actually a good stress test for engaged people to see if it's actually going to work out. Actually, another good idea, for probably like half the cost, would be to take a road trip with them. That's when you'll learn how you really feel about someone. If you can come back after a road trip without a lot of strain on you guys relationship, then congratulations. But if not, then well, you kept her away from the other guy for two weeks. A pair of love outins. Not comfortable. The soul wears away incredibly quickly. Heels easily get scraped on grates. I live somewhere with lots of grates. Quick note from someone who worked in fashion and knows these designers and the factories where they're made. Love outins are expensive and they're not well made. Just a name. Jimmy Choo sold his company in name ages ago. Nothing too special anymore except brand recognition. Imo. Manalas are well made. And they are made in a factory that also sells another identical shoe without the name brand or price. I will update when I find it. Sorry. I forgot. Sergio Rossi also sold the name about a decade ago or so. If you want the real Sergio Rossi. By G and Vito Rossi. Named after his son. I believe. But that's Rossi's current company. Gian Marco Lorenzi makes excellent shoes. Caparixi makes excellent shoes. Lesela usually makes excellent shoes. Friends. I will check my closet and come back with some shoes for you guys. I apologize for the brain fog. Comment saved even though I'm never gonna buy an expensive shoe. B come back from the closet I want to know more high quality shoe brands ha. I think Club Outins are famously the worst heels in terms of comfort. I feel your pain. I've heard from a lot of people that Manolos are the most comfortable of expensive shoes. Jimmy Choo heels are also really comfy. Got some for my wedding day and wore them for the full 12 hours and I don't usually wear heels. Bought a pair of used snowmobiles for $2000. Had them for 2 years. First year we both got the flu the one week the snowmobile trails were open so never used them. Second year my wife was pregnant so we decided to sell them. Ends up one no longer wants to start and the other one runs but now has issues. Ended up selling them for $500. Never once used them besides unloading them from the trailer when we bought them. Where do you live where the snowmobile trails are only open for one week? Lower Wisconsin. Was a sheer for snow. We got 6 inches then it warmed up and it all melted. Just kept repeating that cycle. Other years usually get a solid month. All you can eat sushi bar. Did the math on how much sushi I had to eat to save money from just buying the rolls individually. I hit my goal. But at what cost? I was trying not to throw up for the whole drive home. And spent the rest of the day in bed clutching my stomach and rethinking my life. How much was your AYCE? Place I used to go to prior to COVID had a $16 AYCE lunch. Break even at 2 or 3 rolls. Was a no brainer when we were in a sushi mood. Every AYCE sushi joint near me was 30 stroke 35 US dollars. So if you could get to rolls at $12 each, the AYCE wasn't worth it. Bought a PS3 when it came out and had to return it to pay rent. I had the same thing. Bought a PS3, but needed money so I returned it a week later. 
Based on what happened to my dad's PS3 and a lot of other people's I'd say you lucked out there. I once bought a good quality regulation pool table, 8 feet x 44 inches with all the accessories for about $4000, but after moving to a new location, I regretted the purchase because there was no room for it, other than to give up the dining room and replace the dining room chandelier with a billiards light fixture. Other than to give up the dining room and replace the dining room chandelier with a billiards light fixture. How's your new pool room then? 8 decadent later award myself for exercising, completely undermining my efforts to get in shape, every, single, week. Bought a telescope, but then I needed a camera to take pics, then I needed a camera and smaller scope to guide it, then I needed a better, more expensive mount, then I needed another camera to help set up the more expensive mount. Then I needed cases and storage for this stuff, and another camera, and a star tracker. Then all of a sudden I have thousands in gear that I've used exactly never because it's freezing and cloudy most of the good viewing season anyways. I have a friend who did the same thing, started with a decent telescope and just kept buying all manner of lenses and things spending crazy amounts which just kept spiraling out of control. If you're not careful, the costs of the hobby can be astronomical. I bought a laptop from Razer, worst decision ever, already had to send it back to them once, now it's just out of warranty and having more problems, never again. Bought a BMW 135i when I already had a perfectly goodness and 350z that was paid off, I was young and dumb and had just started making serious money for the first time in my life, so when I looked at that monthly payment I said this is fine, I can totally make this not taking into account all of the other bills that can suddenly crop up. One of the worst decisions I ever made. Easily, an acquaintance of mine had a Toyota RAV4 and traded it in for a used BMW X3. Not even a year later the X3 broke and he had to take the bus for a while because he couldn't afford the repair cost. He ended up buying an old Corolla box while the X3 sat in his garage. I haven't heard from him so I'm not sure what happened later. BMW has the highest maintenance costs, highest for 75k miles, highest for 150k miles, highest for 10 years. Getting the Cyrus XM deal, 30 stroke 6 mo, for my car since when I do drive, it's cross state, and then forgetting to cancel threatened to cancel, so I got charged 120 for the next 6 months. Went to Vegas and spent more money than I had intended. Had a blast but flash forward a month later I had nothing to pay my car payment and in Florida if you are late one month they can repo your car. They did. I spent around £300 on all the talisman board games and a further £200 on a custom made box to keep them all in. Largely due to COVID, I've played them once. Board gaming is my main hobby. I haven't really played any in a year. I play some with my wife, and I've played a few online. But online just isn't the same. It will come around. Bought a sandwich after work, nearly choked on it. I was insanely broke as a 22 years old and just landed a new job. I was so excited about it and decided to celebrate by buying chicken nuggets and a caramel frappe from McDonald's. The breading from the first damn chicken nugget managed to cut the inside of my throat and I couldn't speak for two days. How the F was your nugget breaded with razor blades? Just bungee eating this. I struggled with bungee eating disorder for the entirety of my teenage years and the shame and guilt and disgust that came after a bungee is something I would just ignore and convinced myself to not see as problematic because I was treating myself, some of my worst, that I can remember, two Jimmy John sandwiches, and cookies and chips, a giant bowl of leftover spaghetti, entire box of baked ravioli, Two bottles of sparkling grape juice entire loaf of Italian bread with butter. Half a tub of ice cream. Party size bag of salt vinegar chips. Two boxes of macaroni and cheese free overstuffed. Large takeout boxes of buffet food washed down with too much DR. Pepper party size bag of corn chips. Whole jar of tostita squeezo blanco. Box of Swiss rolls. Three monster energy drinks. Two blocks of dry ramen with the seasoning on them. The regret that followed was usually in the form of throwing up because I was so full, having bruised my stomach making it difficult to move, and obviously, feeling like show for all. Luckily I am on a medication now for bed and have gone to therapy, so my binges are very few and far between. Those I listed were all from ages 13-19, and I'm 22 now and healthier than I have ever been.
I don't drink sugary drinks or eat any processed foods, rarely get takeout, and have significantly increased my fruit vegetable intake. The best part is that I can stick to normal portion sizes. Even the thought of the way I constantly caved and stuffed myself before is disturbing to me now, and I could never imagine doing it again. I really wonder how many years I took off my life by eating like that. Don't treat yourself with lots of food multiple days of the week. Find professional help instead. Pretty much everything I impulse bought while unemployed during quarantine. I've been unemployed for over a year now, and hadn't bought anything nice for myself in months. While buying groceries, I saw some pomegranates, and I decided I deserved a treat. I found the biggest one in the pile, looked great, and bought it. When I cracked that fair open that night, it was rotten inside, with no sign it had gone bad on the outside. I actually cried, because I felt I had wasted precious money I shouldn't have, if that ever happens again, or happened recently enough. What you do is take that fair right back to the store, they'll let you exchange it, man. How I wish I had the give a damn to return groceries. I remember when I worked at a grocery store people would make returns and all I thought was, while I get it you want what you paid for. I can imagine even expending the energy to return a head of lettuce or a can of beans. After years of wanting to experiment with my hair, I finally convinced myself that dyeing my long healthy brown hair purple was the best way to treat myself. I was originally given a price of $150 give or take depending on amount of dye used. Anyway, when she was done styling, I was happy and it looked pretty. I got to the counter and the total comes to $500. Now, I'm not a confrontational person. Also, I was young and kind of stupid to not argue with them. So I just paid, left a $50 mandatory gratuity and left. I know. For the next two weeks everything that came in contact with my hair was stained purple. Every time I washed my hair it bled purple. My shower was stained. The skin on my back. Pillowcase. Sheets. The back of my shirts. Purple. The worst part was that my long beautiful healthy brown hair was a heaping faded broken pile of straw after those two weeks. So I went out and bought a box dye similar to my own color. Dyed my hair back and swore off ever dyeing my hair ever again. You got screwed. A good cosmetologist would not damage your hair with just one round of dyeing, or have that much of an issue with bleeding. But worst of all, there is no scenario in which it's okay to go more than 200% over budget without the client knowing. That's a straight up scam. I don't say this to beat you up, just to let you know that not all hair salons will be like this. And if you ever want your hair colored again you can find a good salon. Got a promotion that meant I would be driving most days to an office. After commuting by train for years, bought myself a Tesla for the new ride, took delivery on the 14th of March last year, haven't driven to the office once, between the down payment and the monthly payments since, I've spent about $7 a mile to own the thing. I caught myself, but I was about to buy a 3080 off eBay for about $800. It turns out it was just a picture of it and the goal was to get bots to buy it. But I didn't read the description and almost bought it. Maybe I am a bot. I dropped $1000 on a gaming PC when I was a sophomore in college. Took out a credit card to put it on that and... Up, uh, overestimated my ability to consistently make more than the minimum payments. Ended up finally paying it off like 2 years later. Having paid probably an extra $300 in interest, but learned a valuable lesson and also had a better PC than all my friends. That's a refined cheap lesson on credit cards. At a zero onto that for me when I was an idiot 24 year old. And I thought I got off easy compared to some of my friends. Bought myself luxurious body gel. I used it one time. Got an allergic reaction. My left leg doubled in size because of how swollen it was. It hurt. It was stinging as hell and. It was overall a disaster. The bottle was not even 90 milliliters. And cost me more than 180 kr. F you, company that made this bullsh. My darling boyfriend got into streaming when the pandemic hit and we went into lockdown. He gained a small following speedrunning games. He had some fun. During the height of all this, I thought I'd give it a try. I streamed my sims builds like once or twice. But for a multitude of reasons just thought it wasn't for me. One of those reasons being I don't know anything about the tech. I just swapped out my laptop for my BFs when I streamed. 
My boyfriend has an Elgato capture thing. When he saw that I wanted to get into it, he bought me one as well. Which was not cheap as the world was shut down and everyone and their mother wanted one of these things. I didn't qualify for unemployment and he was making only about to stroke 3 of his normal paycheck from pandemic relief unemployment so I was not happy at all. His reasoning was that we can both stream at the same time and do dual streams. He had such good intentions but for someone who knows so much about the technology and setup, he ought to have known that we combined simply don't have a powerful enough computer to dual stream the way he wanted to. I know he just wanted this to be a fun activity we could both do together, so he treated himself, and me I guess, to a second Elgato. It's never been used. Now we are back to work and he doesn't stream at all. So now we have two unused Elgatas. Minecraft Story Mode was all excited I won 50 bucks in Halloween raffle and why the f did I not research that hot a garbage first. Overnight in a hotel room with a professional escort, she got drunk and broke down in tears over the fact that she is an escort. This comma is killing me. Every time I've eaten an entire bag of dried mangoes in a day, they are fairly small bags, but still more fiber than one day's worth, so it all comes out at once the next morning. Bought a ticket to a concert as a birthday present to myself, got way too drunk and got a DUI and totaled my car. After getting another DUI, I realized I had a problem, got help, and am over 3 years sober now. Every time I've bought a sex toy, it's great until I not, then it's great. I spent $200 on this, $200 is pretty steep for a sex toy. Had not eaten Burger King in 10 years and last week a buddy at work said he was going. Figured man I miss double whoppers I want one. Got it. Loved it. Then an hour later I'm eating Pepto and running back and forth to the bathroom. Yeah there was a reason I didn't eat it for 10 years. Oh I win this hands down. Every Halloween my friends and I go out to celebrate at an old brewery in our town. They go all out for Halloween with an attached hotel. It's the best place to party for the holiday. The day of the party in 2019 was my last day working before a much needed vacation. I had just started a new position with my company and I was totally burned out. I had to work late that night so I couldn't meet up with my friends until about 3 hours after everyone else was together. By the time I arrived everyone was pretty buzzed and I felt like I needed to catch up. So I shotgun 3 11% beers and was feeling good. This happened at 10 p.m. I wanted to treat myself to a good night after such a long few weeks. Plus I was off the next day so I could recover from the hangover without much trouble. We left the bar at 1.30am and took an Uber back to one of my friend's apartment. By that point I had consumed the 3 beers from earlier, plus another 2 11% beers, 2 Long Islands, 1 trash can, 2 tequila shots and a green tea shot, all in roughly 3 hours. Keep in mind I was 29 at the time and still though I could drink like I was 21. I got to their place and crashed on a sofa, still fully coherent. At about 4am I woke up with my heart racing. I didn't think much of it and went back to sleep. I woke up at 8 and it was still pounding. I figured I just needed some water and food and I'd be fine. Fast forward to the afternoon and my heart still didn't slow down. I went to the ER and had an EKG done. My resting heart rate was up to 182 BPM. I was admitted and diagnosed with holiday heart. For those unfamiliar it's essentially an alcohol induced atrial fibrillation. I had to have my heart shocked back into rhythm and spent my vacation at home wearing a heart monitor. TLDR. I drank too much to celebrate a vacation and had to get my heart restarted. Most Apple products. Bought an iPad so now when I'm bored of scrolling on my phone I can go be bored scrolling on a bigger version of my phone. I was manic and went shopping. $4 care LASIK surgery, new furniture, new MacBook, bunch of shoes and clothes, trip to Mexico, drugs and alcohol. I kept telling myself you deserve it. Treat yourself. Few months later and working on paying it off. Was feeling terrible because of a recent breakup and a few other things. One day I got one cake of it bucks straight to my bank account so I decided to go out and get some heroin. As I had been clean for several months and felt like I could treat myself and temporarily feel a little better. Just this once. Well it's been months now and I'm again trapped in this stupid addiction. Though I'm slowly digging myself out. At least I learned that for me when it comes to opioids it's all or nothing. 
as when I wasn't using it was super easy to stay clean and I never had any cravings but once I decide to use just once I always go back to daily use eventually. This time it took many months as I but eventually it always gets to that point. 100% of the time with no exception.